Once again, we send greetings to all our valued listeners and viewers throughout the whole world. More particularly to all Shepherds Rod believers and most especially to our beloved brothers and sisters in the United States of America. Special greetings to our brethren in Colorado, in Fiji Island, Mexico, Spain, in Africa, in the United Kingdom, and also to our brethren in Australia. And to the rest of the 144,000 living saints scattered abroad. Greetings. May the good Lord bless you and have a wonderful evening. This is our episode number 13 of the subject, the Bible calendar, and it is a special episode. We will be dealing directly to the main subject. I would like to read again the statement in 2SR 142 saying, It would have been unreasonable and an injustice to the chosen people of God if he should have left them in darkness concerning the time of the most important event of all church history, the coming of Christ. So that is a general term, the coming of Christ. And we know that there are different comings of Jesus Christ. In track number 3, page 48, thus again and for the fourth time it is seen that there are two different comings of the Son of Man. The one to severe the wicked from among the just in the church, Matthew 13, verse 49. And then immediately to call the just from among the wicked in Babylon, Revelation 18, verse 4. The other to take the saints, both the resurrected and the living, to the mansions which he has prepared for them. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 16. John 14, verse 1 to 3. But I would like to categorize the coming of Jesus Christ into two. The invisible coming and the visible coming of Jesus Christ. and But the climactic point, we know that that is the visible coming of Jesus Christ. And here in uh, to us are page 178 saying, while the Savior has clearly pointed out the nearness of His coming to the generation that shall witness all these signs, he has not left us in darkness as to how long it will be from the time of the fulfillment of these signs to that great and glorious event. For he added, this generation, the one that has seen the signs, shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Verse 34, as the generation spoken of by the master is about to pass away. And the kingdom of the of everlasting life ushered in the searcher of truth should not neglect his opportunity by allowing things of lesser importance to occupy his mind or time. No. The only thing by which the scriptures and the spoke prophecy in the Sherbert publications when he declared that it will never be made known to any mankind concerning the definite time of the visible coming of Jesus Christ. But to know the year of Christ's visible coming cannot be construed that it is the definite time of Christ's visible coming. I would like to give you an example. For example, Donald Trump, the President of the United States of America, will announce that he will visit Australia in the year 2021. It could not be a definite time because 2021 in Gregorian calendar, it has 365 days and it never been mentioned in what month and in what day. Therefore, to say that he will come in such country on the year 2021 could not be definite time. And brothers and sisters, the only way that God's people could understand the nearness of His coming is to know the very year by which Jesus Christ will come. Now, since the Jebus Rod, according to uh, 2SR page 252, it says, A computation of like manner was employed to define the year of Jubilee. 
Say the Lord, thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of years unto thee, seven times seven years. And the space of the seven Sabbaths of years shall be unto thee forty and nine years. Leviticus 25 verse 8. And it says, brothers and sisters, so let us read the statement. It says, the fiftieth year, while the land rested, being also a type of the millennium, showing that the land shall keep a Sabbath rest. A like computation is used. Therefore, at the beginning of the thousand years is the commencement of the jubilee in its antitype. And as the land was returned to the lawful owners in the typical year of jubilee, just so it will be in the antiquity return to the saints. Thy people also shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. The branch of my planting, the work of my hands, I may be glorified. Isaiah 60 verse 21. Now the shepherds had made it something that the peaceable coming of Jesus Christ would be on the year Jubilee. Therefore, brothers and sisters, there is no reason for God to have such ceremonies in the Levitical priesthood, which is the year of Jubilee, without the particular object in view. Now, in this study, we can easily discern, brothers and sisters, such that the year of Jubilee is pointing to the deliverance of God's people. And since there are only two which is commonly understood by all shepherds and believers concerning the kingdom of God, it is the premillennial kingdom and it is the millennial kingdom. And here in early writings, page 285, saying deliverance of the saints and it could not be the visible coming of Jesus Christ. Because this deliverance is at midnight, whereas the deliverance of the resurrected saints and the living saints at the visible coming of Jesus Christ is at sunset. Now, I would like to read here in early writings 285, saying, It was at midnight that God chose to deliver His people. As the wicked were mocking around them, suddenly the sun appeared shining in His strength and the moon stood still. The wicked look upon the scene with amazement, while the saints beheld with solemn joy the tokens of their deliverance. Signs and wonders followed in quick succession. Everything seemed turned out of its natural course. The streams ceased to flow. Dark, heavy clouds came up and clashed against each other. But there was one clear place of settled glory whence came the voice of God, like many waters, shaking the heavens and the earth. There was a mighty earthquake. The graves were opened, and those who had died in faith under the third angel's message, keeping the Sabbath, came forth from their dusty beds, glorified to hear the covenant of peace that God was to make with those who had kept his law. We know that this is the resurrection in Daniel 12, according to track number 5. And those who died under the third angel's message since 1844 will be resurrected. Now let's read track number 5 on page 110. It says, While the altar, a spatial and smaller object, must represent a spatial and smaller body of branches dead, the righteous who died from 1844 on and who are to come up, in the special resurrection, Daniel 12, verse 2, then the quotation is early writings, page 285, the one we read. And then it says in page 286, then commenced the jubilee. So this jubilee, brothers and sisters, is not the jubilee of the Satan visible God, Jesus Christ. But both kingdoms will be established on the year of jubilee. Now here in Track number 3, 1934 edition, on page 67, it says, The scriptures often employ mathematical means in defining existence of time and number of years from one biblical event to another. So the statement says, from one biblical event to another. The number of days from the wave ship to the Pentecost was derived by multiplying 7 times 7, which equals 49.
In like manner, the number of years from one jubilee to another was determined by multiplying the seven sabbatical years by seven, the sum of which is 49. Therefore, multiplication is a common scriptural method of teaching to Trap number 3, 1934, edition, page 6 to 7. Brothers and sisters, the statement in the Bible in Romans 15, verse 4, saying, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So we need to base our study only to the things which is read, or in other words, brothers and sisters, the only gospel that we are to preach, volume 6 on page 19, it says, The word of truth, it is written, is the gospel we are to preach. The only gospel that we are to preach is the word, it is written. Now concerning the statement from one biblical event to another, the only biblical event that we can connect to the visible coming of Jesus Christ is Christ's visible ascension to heaven. And let us read again the statement in Bible commentary. It says here on, I think, 6 BC 1055, it says, The time had now come, the Spirit had been waiting for the crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension of Christ. For 10 days, the disciples offered their petition for the outpouring of the Spirit, and Christ in heaven added his intercession. This was the occasion of his ascension and inauguration, a jubilee in heaven. So, the recorded jubilee that had been recorded in the voice of inspiration is the ascension of Jesus Christ, by which such ascension of Jesus Christ took place on the year of jubilee. Now, that is the biblical event by which we need to base our study, brothers and sisters. The very words of the angel in Acts chapter 1, on verse 11, it says, Which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Acts chapter 1 verse 11. What does it mean by in like manner? It is pointing to the visible coming of Jesus Christ. That the visible coming of Jesus Christ must be also in the year of Jubilee. It was already stated by the shepherd's rod that the commencement of the thousand years or the millennium is the commencement of the year of Jubilee. And the shepherds rod declared clearly that the millennium will commence at the visible coming of Jesus Christ. Here in 2 Azar 161, it says, From that point of the chart, close of provision to the second coming of Christ and the beginning of the millennium, there will be 15 months, a season, and a time. Daniel 7, verse 11 and verse 12. So that is very plain, brothers and sisters, that the second visible coming of Jesus Christ must be on the year of Jubilee. And in what year of Jubilee? That is from one biblical event to another. And there is no other biblical event that connected to the visible coming of Jesus Christ. It is Christ's visible ascension to heaven. By which the Bible says, in like manner. Now, let us read again, track number three. We call it the third edition in track number three. And it is concerning the 40 days. So, let me read to you. It says here, If you think Christ remained 40 days after the resurrection undecidedly, if you think the Holy Ghost fell on the 120 just because there happened to be that many, if you think that 12,000 out of each tribe were sealed by chance, then you might as well think the fact that 12 times 12,000 equals 144,000 is a mathematical accident. Your own conclusion to this vital question should show you the amount of light there is in you. Now let us focus our attention to these two biblical numbers 
40 and 120. Now, you think, brethren, that 6,000 years divided by 50 equals 120 is a mathematical accident? What is number 50? The year of Jubilee. Therefore, we can easily understand that the 6,000 years prophecy contain 120 jubilees. Now, let us read 2SR. Here in 2SR, page 245 and 246. As God declared the danger to the old world by the preaching of Noah in one generation, just so has He forewarned the world of its end in this generation. As provision was made before the flood for those who wish to escape the ruin, just so He has provided means and facilities for all who wish to evade the doom that confronts our world. Not to enter into an ark built by the hands of men. No, no, that was only a figure. But into many mansions prepared by the Lord Himself. Not into an ark floating over mud waters, but into mansions resting on foundations of precious stones. The dreaded flood is a type of the dark millennium. As God's faithful people were saved then, so shall they be saved now. But the sinner now shall perish as the sinner then. Now, brothers and sisters, the shepherds had made it so plain that the new Jerusalem, by which God's people would be there for 1,000 years, is the antitypical ark. I remember uh, the statement given by Shepherd's Rod and the voice of inspiration is plainly telling brothers and sisters that God's people, and I know it is generally accepted, that the saints would be in the new Jerusalem for 1,000 years, and that is the millennium. Now, since the, the Shepherd's Rod declared clearly, brethren, that the new Jerusalem is the antitypical ark, but here's another statement I would like to read. Track number 8 on page 66. As in Noah's ark, the type, so in the antitypical ark, the kingdom, nothing shall hurt or destroy. The lion, the wolf, the lamb, the leopard, the calf, and the fatling shall live peaceably together, unlike the ox shall feed on straw. Thus now, as in Noah's time, God shall preserve a remnant of men and beasts out of his whole creation instead of exterminating every living thing and then creating them all over again. Trunk number 8, page 66. Here's another statement in 1 TG number 9 on page 12. It says, For another phase of this work, we also have the flood as a type. As Noah's preaching brought the world to an end in his day, so our preaching will bring the world to an end in our day. As the faithful of that day found refuge in Noah's ark, so the faithful of today shall find refuge in the kingdom. The church purified, here forecasted. Now, there are two antitypical arcs, the premillennial kingdom and the millennial kingdom, by which both of them will commence on the year of Jubilee. Now, uh, for example, brothers and sisters, this is the premillennial kingdom. So this is the premillennial kingdom. This kingdom is the premillennial kingdom. And accordingly, God's people will be there on the year of Jubilee. The year of Jubilee. This is called the pre-millennial kingdom. Now we have here the millennial kingdom. The 1,000 years in heaven. So this is the millennial kingdom. But the millennial kingdom still will commence on the year of Jubilee. And the shepherds have declared that Jubilee must be from one biblical event to another. Therefore, the premillennial kingdom, there must be a biblical event by which from that biblical event, we need to count how many jubilees by which this kingdom will be established. 
but for sure this kingdom will be established in connection with the ascension of Christ it must be the 40th jubilee it will be the 40th jubilee brothers and sisters from the ascension of now let us put here the ascension of Jesus Christ in 31 AD so this is the year of jubilee 31 AD the ascension of Jesus Christ according to the voice of inspiration took place on the year of jubilee therefore the 40 days after Christ's resurrection he stayed on earth for 40 days because that 40 days is indicating that Jesus Christ would remain in heaven for 40 jubilees and at the 40th jubilee that would be the visible coming of Jesus Christ and that is why the shepherd's word says multiplication is one way of revealing the truth and it can be easily discovered by multiplying 40 times 50 equals 2000 therefore 2000 plus 31 then you will fall in 2031 therefore it must be 2031 but that is Bible calendar therefore if the Bible calendar will not be restored brothers and sisters we could never be able to ascertain clearly when would that be the year of jubilee in the term of the roman calendar and that is why the statement given in the bible saying it would have been unreasonable uh, in 2sr rather 242 the statement in 2sr 242 saying it would have been unreasonable and injustice to the chosen of people of God if they would they will be left in darkness concerning the most important event of all the history of the church the second coming of Jesus Christ or the second visible coming of Jesus Christ the climactic event of all the events of the history is the second visible coming of Jesus Christ and that statement plainly indicating that there is a divinely appointed time that God would reveal his people, brothers and sisters. When would that be? And since that revelation is now given unto us, plainly showing that according to the Shemper's word here in 2SR, let me read to you, 255. It says here, we may not presume that God had brought about these coincidences without an object in view. Do not forget that. There must be particular object in view. As the ceasing of the rain is a time type of the end of this world, so the ascension of Christ with those who were resurrected with him is a type of the ascension of the saints at the coming of the Lord. It also reveals that his coming would be on Wednesday and the train of glory shall depart for the heaven of heavens on Thursday. Again, we are told that it would take the saints seven days to ascend to the throne of God and that we shall rest a Sabbath on one of the planets while on the way. From this, it is evident that Christ shall come in the middle of the week. So again, we find that one thing proves another. Such close calculations of the schedule of events that are soon to transpire make it evident that the end of all things is at hand. Otherwise, the information would not as yet have been submitted. Brethren, to my all beloved fellow Shambhar's Rod believers, it is high time now, brothers and sisters, that we need to love each other. We need to help each other. Brothers and sisters, there is no reason, brothers and sisters, that we will fight each other. It should be that all of us, Shepherds Rod believers, our desire that, if possible, all Shepherds Rod believers would be in God's kingdom. And if that is our desire, what is the reason to fight against each other? It is high time now that we need to study closely what the Shepherds Rod teaches. It is high time now to study closely what the Word of God is telling to you and I. Now, try to re-study all this information, brothers and sisters. Now, let us now gradually decipher the information given by the Shepherds Rod. For sure, 
it is definite and it can never be mistaken because this is the word of God that Christ's second visible coming would be on Wednesday. Or in other words, God is gradually unfolding that very important event of all the history of the church, the coming of Christ. Now, we have now two information given here in this reading. Jesus Christ will come on sunset because the statement says Wednesday night. I would like to read again. It says here, uh, to us our page 255. Now, let me read to you another statement. Answerer number 2, page 23. The rod is in no respect sitting time for Christ's return. Though it concludes from the flood study that he may come for his own on some midweek night. So that is the second visible coming of Jesus Christ, midweek night. It does not even intimate on which Wednesday night that may be. So the shepherd's rod is trying to emphasize that, no, that is not definite time to say Wednesday night because there are many Wednesday nights. Now, how about the revelation that Jesus Christ would come on the year of Jubilee? Still, that is not definite time. And the simple illustration that I gave is that if the President of the United States of America, Donald Trump, will say, I will visit Australia on the year 2021, that is not a definite time. Because 2021, brothers and sisters, there are 365 days. Now, if the President of the United States of America will say, I will visit Australia on the year 2021 on Wednesday. Still, that is not a definite time because in one year, there are 51 Wednesdays. But the statement, if you will read, brothers and sisters, the, the Spur Prophecy, the Shepherd's Rod Publications, my dear brothers and sisters, if God would not reveal the year, how could God's people know the nearness of His coming? But to know the year, the very year of Christ's visible coming is not a definite time. But for sure, one of the 51 Wednesdays on the year of Jubilee must be the visible coming of Jesus Christ. And that is what we are now dealing. And secondly, even though you can simply multiply 40 times 50 equals 2,000, then add 31 ED, 2,031, then you will declare that the year of Jubilee must be in 2,031, but that is Bible calendar. How could we ascertain clearly the year 2,031, Bible calendar, if the Bible calendar will not be restored? Brothers and sisters, how could we ascertain clearly in our Roman Gregorian calendar. For example, I would like to read to you here in answerer number 3. On page 9, it says, Can you tell us the Hebrew New Year's Day and the days of this their sacred feast in terms of our Roman calendar? Someone is asking to be the hotter. Can you tell us the Hebrew New Year's Day? Of course, the Hebrew New Year's Day must be April 1. March 30 and April 1. And not only the Hebrew New Year's Day, but also the days of their sacred feast in terms of our Roman calendar. And of course, B.T. Hobbit have not been able to give an absolute answer. Although he explained that the true calendar must be the Hebrew calendar. And the statement in page 11 saying, Once for all, once for all is seen the utter impossibility of the Roman months having the slightest thing to do with fixing the time of either the Passover or the sheep offering and does not the slightest thing to do with reckoning the time of either the crucifixion or the resurrection of Christ. If the only medium that we could be able to ascertain the sacred feast through the so-called vernal equinox of the Roman calendar saying, beginning its first month of the year with the first new moon at or after the vernal equinox, March 20, 21, it puts the portent day that on which the Passover lamp was to be slain on April 3. But B.T. says, no, 
once more all is seen the utter impossibility. And we will prove to you because look at the historical event, 31 AD. Saying here, April 3 must be April 14, basing the vernal equinox of the Roman calendar. Now look at the Julian calendar in 31 AD to prove that what the shepherd's rod is telling is absolutely correct. Brothers and sisters, Julian calendar. Look at brothers and sisters, the Julian calendar in 31 AD. April. So April 3 is 14, then April 4 is 15, April 5 is 16. Does Jesus Christ died on Thursday? Bithyodev says it utters the impossibility of the Roman calendar basing their so-called vernal equinox that is erroneous. And the declaration given by the voice of inspiration says, Once for all is seen the utter impossibility of the Roman monks having the slightest thing to do with fixing the time of either the Passover or the sheep offering and does not the slightest thing to do with reckoning the time of either the crucifixion or the resurrection of Christ. Or in other words, unless the Bible creation calendar will be reestablished, unless it will be restored, there is no possibility that we could ascertain clearly the exact day of the Holy Feast. Now, brothers and sisters, to repeat again, the statements, for example, in the Great Controversy 371, it says, uh, you can read the entire page, but let me read to you the last paragraph. Thus it was shown, uh, I would like to read the middle part, it says, Though no man knoweth the day nor the hour of his coming, we are instructed and required, required to know when it is near. You see the statement is, we are required to know when it is near. We are further thought that to disregard his warning and refuse or neglect to know when his advent is near will be as fatal for us as it was for those who live in the days of Noah not to know when the flood was coming. Then it says, Thus it was shown that scripture gives no warrant for men to remain in ignorance concerning the nearness of Christ's coming. But those who desired only an excuse to reject the truth close their ears to this explanation. In the words, no man knoweth the day nor the hour continued to be echoed by the bold scoffer and even by the professed minister of Christ. As the people were roused and began to inquire the way of salvation, religious teachers stepped in between them and the truth, seeking to quiet their fears by falsely interpreting the word of God. Unfaithful watchmen united in the work of the great deceiver, crying, Peace, peace, when God had not spoken peace. Like the Pharisees in Christ's day, many refused to enter the kingdom of heaven themselves, and those who were entering in, they hindered. The blood of these souls will be required at their hand. The Great Controversy, page 371. Now, how about the 1888 message? So, let's read, brothers and sisters. Can anything be learned from the Bible related to the time of the Second Advent? Can anything be learned from the Bible related to the time of the Second Advent? This is a grave inquiry. And from the very nature of the subject, is worthy of close and candid investigation. We accept the Bible as a revelation from heaven. What God has made known in that book ceases to be a mystery. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God. But those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever. Deuteronomy 29 verse 29. If the sacred scriptures have revealed nothing, concerning the time of the coming of our Lord, then we can know nothing concerning it. But if they have definitely informed us that we may know when it is near, even at the doors, then these things belong to us and to our children, believing that He has given all the Holy Scriptures for a wise purpose, for our learning and benefit. We consider it not merely our privilege, but our duty to search the scriptures with an earnest desire to know the whole revealed will of God. Now, here's another statement, brothers and sisters. 
it says, Our Lord has stated the object of these signs, which is that we may know when His coming is at the doors. But we are told by some that the church is not to know anything of the period of Christ's second advent. Then we inquire, why did our Lord give signs of the event? Are they given to deceive us? To lead the honest Christian to look for Christ's coming when, in fact, nothing is to be known of the time of the event? Certainly not. The fact that Christ foretells signs of His coming and then states the object of those signs that the church may know when the event is near, even at the doors, is sufficient proof that it is the will of heaven that the church should understand the period of the second advent. And then it says, brothers and sisters, Noah's time and hours. A picture of the present condition of the mass of mankind is here drawn. The people of the last generation, we are now in the last generation. Brethren, in this study, if you will look at the Bible, more or less, one generation consists only 50 years. But that 50 years, in reality, is applied from 1844. Ponder deeply, brothers and sisters. Now, because we need to ascertain clearly the last generation. What is the last generation? The last generation is the generation by which God designs them no longer to taste that. Then for sure, it could not be in the generation of Sister White. Neither the generation of B.T. Hunter because they died. Now, let me read to you. Spiritual Gifts, Book 3, page 26. It says, the woman is a symbol of the church and the remnant of the church represents the Christians of the last generation of men living just prior to the second advent. By which in the last part it says, whom God designs to fit for translation to heaven without seeing death. Who are they? The last generation. They are the generation by which God designs to fit them for translation to heaven without seeing that. Spiritual Gifts, Book 3, page 26. Now, how I could rest assured that we are living in the last generation? By the Bible revelation. Now, listen carefully. For example, I would like to read to you. Exodus chapter 20, it says here, And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Now, the statement, very plain. Only up to the fourth generation. Now, brothers and sisters, there must be an accurate significance of that verse. Fourth generation. Are they only four generations from beginning from creation or in the days of Adam? Or from the time they go out from Egypt? Look at the Bible, brothers and sisters. Now, for example, Reading the Bible in Matthew, uh, let us read beginning from chapter 1, verse 1. It says, The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Now, you can read the entire chapter, brothers and sisters, because it is concerning the generation. But let us go to the summary on verse 17. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. And from David until the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations. And from the carrying away into Babylon unto Christ are 14 generations. How many generations? 14 times 3. 14 times 3. That would be 42 generations from Abraham. Now, let us now try to find out the commencement and the end part. For example, let us go to the time when Abraham was born. Now, the shepherds are declared clearly in 1SR, I would like to read, brothers and sisters, this reading. In 1SR, page 114 and 115, The prophecy made to Abraham of 430 years ended at the time the children of Israel went out of Egypt, which is according to the Bible chronology, King James Version, 1491 B.C. Now, 1491 B.C., that is the end part of the 430 years. 
Now, let us now, example 1491 plus 430, that would be 1921 BC. 1921 BC, that is the call of Abraham. And at that time, Abraham was 75 years old. Therefore, we need to add 1921 plus 75. Plus 75. Therefore, Abraham was born in 1996 BC. Now, let us add 1996 plus 31 up to the time of Jesus Christ. So, it must be 2,027 years. Now, divided by 42. 2,027 divided by 42. That is 48 years. At least 48. For example, to check, 48 times 42. That will be 48 times 42. That will be 2016. So, in this evidence recorded in the Bible, brothers and sisters, now, let us place 50 years, one generation. Because in that illustration, that is 48. Now, let us use 48 minimum and 50 maximum. That one generation, there must be 50 years. And we will show to you Exodus 20 verse 5 that that statement in reality, the direct application is in 1844. Now, let us read the statement in the shepherd's son saying, it was in 1844 that the generation began. Now, let us read the statement. 2SR 237, it says, This is one of the reasons why God allowed Miller to proclaim the coming of Christ in 1844. Now, look up at the ninth hour. Noah predicting the end of the world in his generation. Brothers and sisters, we know that the generation in the days of Noah is the last generation because this is the statement we are reading in the writings of Alonso Jones. And the shepherd's rod is now making a comparison. In the night time, Noah is in the ninth hour and in the daylight, Elijah White is also in the ninth hour. Now let us read again the statement. Now look at, at the ninth hour, Noah predicting the end of the world in his generation. And opposite to the ninth hour in the light part, we see Ellen G. White prophesying of the end of the world in his generation. And that is where this generation began. 237. It says, and that is where this generation began in 1844. Now, from 1844, let us now divide into four generations. Then we can find out the commencement of the last generation, the fourth generation. Now, 1844 plus 50, therefore, that is the first generation ended in 1894. Now, another 50 from 1894, that is in 1944, the second generation. Now, we have... 50, brothers and sisters, 1994, the third generation. Therefore, the fourth generation began in 1995, which is perfectly corroborating to the last section of the Exodus movement, the section represented by Joshua. Would you think that is a mere happenstance? Now, 1994 plus 50, 1994 plus 50, Therefore, it will end in 2044. But the Bible is very plain that the last generation will not be consumed because Jesus Christ will come before the last generation will end. Now, let us go back again to the statement in 2SR. 2SR page 178. It says, This generation, the one that has seen the signs, shall not pass so that generation will not pass till all these things be fulfilled. So that is very plain. The last generation will not pass. The term will not pass meaning the entire period of that generation will never be consumed. Because that generation, the last generation will end in 2034 but it will not pass. It will not be finished. It will not be consumed. Because it is in the year 2031 Bible calendar that Jesus Christ will come on the year of Jubilee. 
Now, I would like to read again the statement here. Noah's time and hours by Alonso T. Jones. Noah's time and hours. A picture of the present condition of the mass of mankind is here drawn. The people of the last generation will be like that before the flood. While the ark was preparing, this shows that we cannot innocently be ignorant on the subject of the Lord's soon coming. It will be a terrible calamity. It will be a terrible calamity in that day. So those who do not know, even as it was to the world in the days of Noah, because they did not know of the approaching time of the flood. If they had, had no means of knowing, they would of course have been innocent and have escaped destruction. But they might have known. For Noah warned them by his preaching, and yet more forcibly pers in building the ark. In this he condemned the world. Hebrews 11 verse 7. He proved his faith by his works. They proved their unbelief and were justly condemned. They turned away from his warnings and forgot his words. So the flood came when they did not expect it. They did not know and took them all away. So will it be when the Son of Man is revealed. Matthew 24 verse 39. Brothers and sisters, we are now in the very time by which what God hath promised is now fulfilling. The shepherds had made it so plain here in answerer number 2 on page 23. It says here, Indeed, though the scriptures do say that even the angels know not the hour, yet if they are ever to be ready to start out with the Lord upon His second advent, certainly they must someday beforehand be told of it in order to make ready and to start out. And although no man now knows the day or hour, yet if the Father sees fit to declare it, we cannot but know it. And I do fully believe that that is the very time by which God the Father already seen that it is now the time that God will declare it. In the words to the letter of flag, page 4 and 5, Will not the day and hour of Jesus appearing be made known by the voice of the eternal God? That the day and hour will be known by the true children of God. And no other appears plain from the fact that we are exhorted to watch for it. And if we do not watch, Jesus will come on us as a thief. And we shall not know what hour he will come upon us. So that none but those who truly watch and hold fast will know the true time. Revelation 3 verse 2 and 3. In 11 symbolic code, number 12, page 7. If no one, if no one is to know the day and hour until the Lord comes, then how could this servant be aware of the day and the hour? Do you see that one statement seems to contradict the other? No one knows the hour, the day. Therefore, God's people must be ready for the event to occur at almost any time. And if this servant does not faithfully perform his duties, then when the Lord is about to come, that servant will not be aware of it. Is that not how you understand these two statements? Up to a certain time, God's people do not know the day and the hour. But if they continue to receive meat in due season, a day will come when the servant is going to be made aware of that hour, of that day. This illustration was not given to us alone, but to all God's people ever since it was written. And they were warned to be ready all the time because no one knew the day and the hour of his coming. But as truth progresses and the word of God unrules, God's servants in the end are to be aware of the day and the hour. Does it not say that? That is just what it does say. But what is the danger here? What caused the servant to begin to eat and drink with the drunken? They say the Lord delay it. 
His coming. 11 Symbolic Code, number 12, pages 7 and page 8. And that predicted event, we are now on that predicted event, brothers and sisters. I remember the statement in 2TG. Let me read to you. It says here, the statement uh, given by the voice of inspiration. 2TG 44, page 38 and page 39. It says, These are some of the signs and events that precede the kingdom of glory, the second coming of Christ. Then through, there are other signs, the first of which seen from the parable of Matthew 25. And here in page 49 and page 50 in 2TG 44, he says, Here we are told that in the latter days, in our time, the ancient kingdom that was destroyed will be reestablished and exalted above all other kingdoms. Then people shall flow unto it, because the law shall go forth of Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. The gospel work, therefore, is to be finished, while its headquarters stand in the Holy Land. Thus the kingdom is set up in provisionary time, in time of salvation, and judicial purification. For after it is set up, other people from many nations flow into it. This is what the Bible says, and certain it is that this is what is to be. For not even... The devil can defeat God's plans or cheat his people. It says, oh yes, the devil will try to explain away what these scriptures say. But he can never make them say something other than what they do say. Besides, anyone's taking the devil's word in preference to God's deserves the devil's reward. And I am sure that he will not be cheated out of it. Since these signs of the times, since these signs of of the times in addition to others are of far greater importance than the Lisbon earthquake, than the dark day, than on, of the falling of the stars. We had better awake to the demand well which they impose upon us and which are bound to fit us for the second coming of Christ and for a home in his kingdom if hidden. But if these signs cannot awaken us, then it is positive that they will cause us to slide down into the bottomless pit while the dreaming, while dreaming of being rich and increased with goods and in need of nothing, supposedly on the way to glory land. What a disappointment and what weeping and gnashing of teeth that would be. The voice of inspiration says, the signs of the establishment of God's kingdom is even more important than the signs of the less born earthquake, than the darkening of the sun, the dark day, than the falling of the stars. What is the sign of that times, of the establishment of the kingdom of Christ? Now, we already proved, brothers and sisters, that accordingly, the voice of inspiration made it so plain that the efforts of this premillennial kingdom in 2TJ 44, page 44, saying, are the efforts to set up the premillennial kingdom, the purified church, accompanied by great signs and wonders, by noise and pomp? To this question, the Lord answers, found in Matthew 13, verse 31 to 33, and also Zechariah 4, verse 6. And it says, not a blast or a boom, and not a bush either, but the plain quiet truth, brothers, sisters, is what saves you and brings the kingdom into being. The plain quiet truth, the same with the statement in 1 TG, number 31. Prophet Isaiah says, in quietness and in confidence shall be our strength. I think that was in Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, right? In quietness and in confidence. Isaiah chapter, let me read to you. The plain quiet truth, Isaiah 30 verse 15. It says, in quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. And I love that song, in quietness, right? In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength, if you believe not 
yet he abided. He abided faithful. If you believe not, yet he abided. He abided faithful. He cannot deny himself. It says here, brothers and sisters, in 1 TG 31, pages 4 and page 5, just as soon as God's people obtain this knowledge of the Lord, just that soon shall the kingdom appear. So it is that while learning of God and of His wisdom, we are at the same time bringing peace on earth. Plainly then, those who have not this knowledge of the Lord cannot become citizens of His kingdom. How essential then that we study for ourselves, how essential that we know what is true through our own personal experience, not through the experience of others. In 11 Symbolico, number 7, page 22, I remember the statement saying, it says, There is something fundamentally wrong with this class of people because God is able to make anyone wise. He can make anyone strong. His truth is so simple that though they be fools, they need not hear therein. Isaiah 35, verse 8. Therefore, all can get understanding. For this reason, those men who get no understanding, God will destroy without mercy. 11 Symbolic Code, number 7, page 22. Now, brethren, we know that when Noah entered into the ark, there are still seven days before the rain began to pour out. And since we have brothers and sisters, Two antitypical are the premillennial kingdom and the millennial kingdom without any doubts, brothers and sisters. The first antitypical are, which is the premillennial kingdom. We will call it the premillennial kingdom. This is the premillennial kingdom. That when God's people would be there, the seven days when Noah entered the ark is typifying seven years. There must be seven years, brothers and sisters. There must be seven years before the seven last plagues will be poured out because the rain represents the seven last plagues. And that seven years is also stated in Ezekiel 39. Now, let us focus now our attention to that seven years. Here in track number 12, let us read on page 52. In page 51, it was mentioned Ezekiel 39, right? And also in page 52. So in page 51, I would like to read the portion seven years. And they that dwell in the cities of Israel shall go forth and shall set on fire and burn the weapons, both the shields and the bucklers, the bows and the arrows, and the handstabs and the spears. And they shall burn them fire seven years so that they shall take no wood out of the field, neither cut down any out of the forest. For they shall burn the weapons with fire, and they shall spoil those that spoiled them, and rob those that robbed them, saith the Lord God. Now the shepherd's word says here in page 52, these are, these are some of the future events that are soon to follow in quick succession in the ushering in of the kingdom, then follows the closing of provision and the pouring out of the seven last plagues which shall fall upon those who figuratively stand on his left hand, those who are outside Palestine. Then while the plagues are falling, the mightiest of all battles will be fought the battle of the great day of God Almighty, the long expected end of the world, the Armageddon. Revelation 16, verse 12 to 16. Now, brothers and sisters, let us connect to TG number 4 on page 19 and page 20. Now, it says here, Clearly, this kingdom of Israel is to set up in the latter days, in the days before the millennium. For after the kingdom is set up, Gog opens war against it. Indeed, this cannot be after the millennium. For then all the nations from the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog with them, shall encompass not the mountains of Israel, but the new Jerusalem. Furthermore, at that time, the slain shall not be buried, but burned to ashes. 
And in page 20, it says here, in continuation, verse 8 to 15, and also quoted in verse 9, the seven years, it says, B.T. Hunter says, As these verses need no comment, we pass on to verse 22 and 29. And in page 21, it says, I do not know of any chapters in the Bible that are more explicit than these chapters of Ezekiel. They need no interpretation whatsoever. So that statement given by the prophet indicates clearly that Ezekiel 39 must be understood as it is indicating that the seven years there must be literal seven years and not symbolical. Now, study and re-study again, brothers and sisters, because for sure this message is a divine revelation coming from God. Now, I would like to gradually summarize. When would be, what day, by which Jesus Christ will come? Answer, 2SR 255, Wednesday night. What year Jesus Christ will come? Answer, 2SR 252, the year of Jubilee. How could we be able to determine the year of Jubilee? Answer, track number 3, 1934 edition, page 67. From one biblical event to another. What biblical event that is connected to the visible coming of Jesus Christ? The ascension of Christ. That is the year of Jubilee. 6 BC, 1055. What is the significance of the 40 days when Jesus Christ was resurrected? He remained 40 days before he ascended to heaven. In like manner, Acts 1 verse 11. Jesus Christ also will remain in heaven. According to Acts chapter 3, verse 19, 20, and 21, there would be 40 jubilees. And in the 40th jubilee, Jesus Christ will come. That is the year of jubilee. And if Jesus Christ will not come in 2031, then Jesus Christ will not come in 2032. Because 2032 is not the year of jubilee. And the statement here, I would like to uh, read that statement. By which, in reality, that statement is definitely applied to us rather than in the days of William Miller. It says here, saying that if Jesus Christ would not come in 1844, then his coming would be delayed 50 years. So let us uh, read the statement. It says, if the Lord does not come on the 10th day of the present seventh month, he cannot come till that day of some other year. And assuming this year to be the jubilee year, that if he does not come this year, his coming must be delayed 50 years. But we know that they suffered disappointment because they had not been able to understand completely the message of Daniel chapter 8, by which such coming is not the visible coming of Jesus Christ. But the thought in the matter is that if Jesus Christ will not come on that year, then his coming would be delayed another 50 years because the Bible cannot be mistaken. The spirit of prophecy cannot be mistaken. The coming of Jesus Christ would be on the year of Jubilee. And there is no other biblical event ever recorded in the Bible except the ascension of Christ by which connected to his second visible coming. As is stated in the Bible, Acts chapter 1, verse 11. That is the only verse saying, in like manner, Jesus Christ will come at his visible coming. Brothers and sisters, so what manner? First, Jesus Christ ascended on the year of Jubilee. So Jesus Christ will descend in the second visible coming on the year of Jubilee. Second, before Jesus Christ ascended to heaven, he remained 40 days on earth after his resurrection. Therefore, that 40 days is also signifying the 40 jubilees. And not only that, we already read in 2SR 245 and 246 that the new Jerusalem is the antitypical ark. Noah entered into the ark at the 128th year. Then all the saints resurrected and living saints will enter into the new Jerusalem in the 1,000 years at the 128th jubilee. What is the 128th jubilee? That is 6,000 years. Because jubilee is 50, 6,000 divided by 50 equals 120. Exactly typifying the 
ark in the days of Noah, the new Jerusalem, as the antitypical ark. So not only pertaining to the 40 days or the number 40, but as well as the number 120. Now, brothers and sisters, to repeat again, the year of Jubilee, there are 51 Wednesday. Now, let us focus only to the first Wednesday and the last Wednesday. The first Wednesday, of course, in the Bible calendar, that is April, right? The first Wednesday must be the first Wednesday on April. And I think that would be on April 6. April 6, 2031 is the first Wednesday. And the last Wednesday is March 26, 2031. There are 51 Wednesdays. And we could send to you that illustration, brothers and sisters, the 51 Wednesdays. I think exhibit number number nine and ex, uh, exhibit number nine up to exhibit number ten. So that is the and we already placed the equivalent on our Gregorian calendar. Now I would like to give you an illustration, brothers and sisters. Although it is no longer possible the last Wednesday, but granting the last Wednesday because what. The most important unto us is the premillennial kingdom. The only reason why God revealed unto us the year of Jubilee by which the second visible coming of Jesus Christ, the intention is not to know the definite time of Christ's coming because even though we already knew the year of Jubilee, but we did not know in that year of Jubilee the specific date of Christ's visible coming. But for sure, one of the 51 Wednesdays on the year of Jubilee, that is the visible coming of Jesus Christ. But there are 51 choices and we did not know what Wednesday on the 51 Wednesdays on the year of Jubilee. But 100%, one of the 51 Wednesdays, that is the visible coming of Jesus Christ because it is stated in the shepherd's run who told us that Jesus Christ will come on Wednesday the shepherd's run 2SR 255 who told us that the coming of Jesus Christ would be on the year of Jubilee the shepherd's run 252 but it was quoted in the Bible only explained by the shepherd's run how could we be able to ascertain the year of Jubilee by one biblical event to another Track number 3, 1934 edition, page 68. Now, what biblical event which is connected to the visible coming of Jesus Christ? 6 BC, 1055. Desperate prophecy pointing to the ascension of Jesus Christ. Would you think this revelation is not accurate, brothers and sisters? To repeat again, to know the year is not the definite time of Christ's coming. There are 51 Wednesdays and we do not know in which of 51 Wednesdays. But we just take the last Wednesday. For what purpose? Because that is the boundary line. In order to know the nearness of time. Now the Bible declared clearly. And explained by the shepherd's rod. That the seven months. And the seven years. Recorded in Ezekiel 39. Is a literal period of time. Then we need to count backward. Now we will show to you. March 26, 2031, Bible calendar, the last Wednesday on the year of Jubilee. March 26, 2031. So that March 26, 2031, that is the last Wednesday on Bible calendar. But in our Roman Gregorian calendar, that is July 24, 2030. So the shepherd's rod is very plain that the fulfillment of the prophecy in Gregorian calendar, let me read to you to prove that that, uh, that is perfect. Here in 1SR packet edition, it says here on page 71, In some instances, the coincidental events may, according to our present calendar, appear to be a year ahead or a year behind due to the fact that the first month of the Mosai calendar falls in the fourth month of the present calendar year. So this statement is absolutely perfect. That the Gregorian calendar is a year behind with the Bible calendar. The Bible calendar is 2031. The Gregorian is 2030. Now, 
As I've said, brothers and sisters, we already give you the formula how to locate uh, the Bible calendar with the Gregorian uh, from our, I think, first six episodes. But we will continue up to episode number 12. But at this time, brothers and sisters, we are trying to locate the year of Jubilee which pertains to the premillennial kingdom. That from the time God's people will be in the kingdom, the same as in the days of Noah, there are still seven years before the rain, which is pointing to the seven last plagues. In the days of Noah, there are seven days when Noah entered into the ark before the rain being poured out. But in this instance, God's people will be already in the kingdom. And there are still the seven days is equivalent to seven years. Now, look at brothers and sisters. March 26, 2031 AD. The last Wednesday. The last Wednesday on the year of Jubilee. But as I've said, the reason that we place the last Wednesday, although uh, it's very negative, I fully believe that Jesus Christ's visible coming could not be the last Wednesday. Because if that is the last Wednesday, then they will arrive in third heaven no longer the year of Jubilee because the year of Jubilee is already ended at his second visible coming. But rather, Jesus Christ will come on this earth on Wednesday, but that Wednesday is not the end part of the year of Jubilee because according to the shepherd's word, when they arrive to the third heaven, that is still the year of Jubilee. But granting the last Wednesday on the year of Jubilee, then let us count backward seven years and seven months. You see, brothers and sisters, it will fall on August 26, 2024. And in Gregorian calendar, that is February 1, 2023 AD. We are now 2020. And that is why we have a subject that we are very certain for sure that September 22, 2022, by was in Bible calendar that is August, uh, April 14, 2024, is the year of Jubilee, the deliverance of God's people. That is the 70th Jubilee. Now, for example, I would like to read to you, and we will uh, study it, uh, or we'll continue it in the next episode. But I would like to read 1 TG number 11, pages 7 and 8. The prophet Jeremiah, it is concerning Zechariah 1 verse 12. The prophet Jeremiah's prediction that the Jews were to spend 70 years in Babylonian captivity had ended although they were still in Babylon. But since this symbolical prophecy finds its fulfillment in our day instead of in Zechariah's day, the angels plea for mercy on Jerusalem and on the cities of Judah therefore find its direct application in this day. So, brothers and sisters, that number 70 in Zechariah 1 verse 12 is not 70 years, but rather that is symbolical pointing to the 70 jubilees as the deliverance of God's people. Now, look at brothers and sisters. We already read in the Shepherd's Rod that it was April 14, 1491 BC that God's people left Egypt. 1 SR 115. Now let us count first, first sabbatical years. April 14, 1491 BC. Then let us maybe add, because BC is descending. Then the first sabbatical year is in April 14, 1484 BC. Then from April 14, 1484 BC. This is calculator. It cannot be mistaken, brethren. And that is why to repeat again, it is God who inspired the modern science to, to help the 11th hour message. Now, April 14, 1484 BC, then another 7 years. Then you will fall in April 14, 1477 BC. How many years the 70 jubilees? Of course, 70 times 50 equals 3,500. Now, let us now April 14, 1477 BC. Then 3,500 years. You see? 
that would be in April 14, 2024. In Gregorian, that would be September 22, 2022. Brothers and sisters, that is the 70th Jubilee from April 14, 1477 BC. 77 itself is a complete number. Therefore, without any doubts, try to see it, brethren. April 14, 2024, in Bible calendar, but in Gregorian, that is September 22, 2022, that is the deliverance of God's people because that is the year of Jubilee. Now, let us now try to find out from uh, April 1, 2024. What is April 1, 2024? April 1, 2024. So in Gregorian, that is September 9, 2022. That is the commencement of the year of Jubilee up to March 30, 2024. So that would be on Gregorian, September 3, 2023. The end part of the year of Jubilee in Gregorian calendar. Brothers and sisters, so without any doubts, my dear brothers and sisters, April 14, the same pattern when God delivered His people from the Egyptian bondage. The same pattern. Pattern number four, therefore, April 14, 2024, must be the year of Jubilee. The deliverance of God's people by which in Gregorian calendar, that would be September 22, 2022. But if that is not the deliverance of God's people, there will be no other significance at all because only the 70, number 70, the 70 uh, Jubilees that have been recorded in the Bible. Second, if 2022 would not be the deliverance of God's people, or it would be in 2025, then the seven years and seven months will be short, brothers and sisters. And there will be no more significance in Ezekiel 39, because the Bible is very plain. From the time God's people reached the kingdom, there are seven years, at least seven years, up to the second visible coming of Jesus Christ. And the shepherd's rod and the Bible declared clearly that the visible coming of Jesus Christ must be on the year of Jubilee. And when we count backward and we put it into the last Wednesday on the year of Jubilee, still we fall on February 1, 2023 in Gregorian calendar. Right? Brothers and sisters, that is February 1, 2023 on Gregorian calendar, which is exactly fits that God's people must be there prior to 2023 because they will be delivered on September 22, 2022 before that seven years will thus commence. And we will prove to you in different angles, brothers and sisters, and in another uh, angle in this study, to repeat again, the restoration of the Bible creation calendar is to know the time, the fulfillment of the promise in Revelation 1 verse 1. I will show these things which must shortly come to pass. Hereafter, meaning from 2020, onwards, brothers and sisters. And I would like to show to you that diagram and from Eden to Eden, and that is our next discussion, that diagram from Eden to Eden. So this is the diagram from Eden to Eden, brothers and sisters. And we will discuss this entire diagram and we can send it to you at this time so that you can download. So when we'll be discussing... You can see to your own copy. This is the diagram entitled from, from the Garden of Eden to the Garden of Eden. So this is the entire diagram, brothers and sisters. With Bible calendar and Julian and Gregorian calendar.
So, we will continue this uh, subject on our next episode and we already entitled it as special episodes. So, I love you brothers and sisters and we hope that all of us will see in God's kingdom, uh, which is soon very soon, our deliverance will come, brothers and sisters. Thank you very much. May the good Lord bless you. Have a beautiful day.